Welcome to Endoscopy on Air. Watch Horst Neuhaus performing a mucosectomy in Barrett's dysplasia. We are dealing with an interesting case. We would like to show you how to evaluate Barrett's and to treat uh, dysplastic formations. They took random biopsies and these showed in some of the specimen high-grade dysplasia and low-grade dysplasia, but they could not correlate the site of the biopsies with a neoplastic formation and then the patient was referred to us and now I would like to show you how we evaluate Barrett's and I have the great uh, pleasure uh, to uh, demonstrate and to use the new Olympus uh, endoscopy system. It's a new generation, as you will see, uh, Avis X1. Uh, firstly, it comes uh, with a new uh, processor here with the integrated light source, so it's only one box. And um, this is a new lightning uh, instead of a xenon lamp. We have four different LEDs, and then I go to the different imaging sources. I will demonstrate white light endoscopy. We have NBI, RDI, TXI, uh, and I would like to show you how it looks like and what can we apply and how does a patient benefit from this advanced imaging. I'm using an endoscope of this junior generation. This is the EZ1500, uh, 9.9 millimeters and the outer diameter. Similar features as Xera 3, but the handle is different, so better ergonomics. A 2.8 millimeter channel, integrated water jet, as you can see here for flushing. And this is obviously now white light and you can appreciate the high resolution and I'm approaching the deeper part of the esophagus. And here we see now the first tongue of a Barrett and this is at 41 centimeter. So then we go forward, these are tongues and now we have at 44 centimeter circumferential extension of Barrett's here, and now we identify the EG junction, which uh, is clarified by the proximal folds, gastric folds here, and you see the palisades vessels at six o'clock. So more or less uh, where you see the squall, small squamous cell island at uh, one o'clock, this is the area of the EG junction, which is at 47 centimeters. So we have a C3 M6 Barrett's. And the next step is now to look for focal lesions. So this is white light. And uh, what you can see already with this high resolution white light is that we have at uh, three o'clock, we have a slightly elevated lesion. So a type uh, 02A. And I go closer here showing here on the right side, and you can already see a different mucosal structure. And now I use a new feature uh, of this endoscope by pressing the usual dual focus button. But this is not the conventional dual focus now for magnification, uh, but it is a mix and a composition of uh, the magnification image as shown here, and the difference is we have still a sharp image even in a larger distance. So it's between two millimeter and 10 centimeter, we have a sharp image. So we have not to adjust the focus. And uh, therefore you can already see the regular vessels here. This is highly suspicious for neoplastic formation. So the next step is uh, I using now a new white light function. This is a TXI for texture and color enhancement imaging. I press this button and it's a complex technology. I switch off the mag magnification, uh, showing much better and more precise differences of the color and brightness, high, better brightness and also 
analysis of the texture, we can better see smaller changes in the texture as shown here now, if you compare it with before. So a, a fantastic resolution. And you see, I already scanned the remaining mucosa between six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock. I didn't see any additional focal lesion. And finally, uh, we have um, NBI. And MBI is even brighter, so there is an additional function, the so-called BIMAC. This is brightness en en enhancement function, a brightness adjustment, so we have an even better brightness also in the distance. And here again, we can see still regular mucosa on the right side, and now we come to the suspicious part here. This is now with magnification, so it's easy to scan the whole mucosa. And now I'm marking the lateral extension. And uh, as this is high-grade displeasure. There is no evidence of uh, deeper of submucosal invasion according to the endoscopic appearance. And therefore, from our perspective, no need to proceed uh, to ESD, but this is a good candidate for uh, EMR for marking, I'm using a 1.5 millimeter APC probe. Uh, this is now from, from Irby uh, with the precise mode. And marking is very important. So the message of this procedure is everybody or many are very much focused on how to resect, how to do EMR and ESD, but it's very important to evaluate uh, Barrett carefully. Otherwise, you resect and finally you have uh, remaining neoplastic tissue or even then uh, recurrences. I would uh, like to demonstrate the original Inui cap technique uh, and you will see that we can very precisely target the area of interest because we have an excellent view here using now TXI so the proximal margin, and uh, I prefer to start at the distal margin, so we can clearly see the irregular part, the area of interest. And with the cap technique, we have to inject, otherwise the specimen, this is a 60 millimeter cap, otherwise the specimen gets too large and there's a risk of entrapment of out of uh, the muscle layer. So, okay, then we have to position the snare. So this is the dedicated snare, the SD221L. I close the distal outlet of the cap by partial suction. And now it's important to work very closely together with the assistance because we, we push the snare out. So, so now the snare is positioned. So this is perfect. It's positioned at the distal outlet, and uh, there's a, a rim at the distal part of the. It's bleeding a little bit at the distal end of the, of the cap. So, and we identify the area here. Then I do a kind of a test suction. I jiggle a little bit close. And now it's very important to close it completely. So, so it's now closed. And now I switch to endocut Q uh, with the cutting duration one, cutting interval six. After two cuts, it's off and I suck the specimen, and this is also easy now to harbor the specimen. A little bit more here at the distal margin, I'll inject. Okay, so the marker is here, okay. So another snare, on you, the snare. So again, partial suction for blockage, out. So, 
excellent position again. You see we are at the level of the instrumentation channel. So and now it's important. Uh -huh. You see I do test suction here. At 12 o'clock you see that we are at the edge of the previous section and now close. Okay, Re I reset. One, two, three, off. Out. Yes, never seen this clearly. And a final seen. view. Okay, a final view before you leave us, and you can believe that it's very easy to complete uh, this procedure. Now the core grasper. We see a minor bleeding here. So now we use the RDI. Yeah, core grasper. So now we have to identify, you can better see now the vessels. So we don't have this reddish image full of blood. And this is the core grasper, five millimeter between the branches. This is very clever mode of uh, the new Olympus system. Yes, open, open. So there is a vessel, close. I use soft coax, 6.5. Uh, here, here you see now nicely pulsation here. So okay. Can you see that? Yes, of course. In the center of the image? Yeah. Yeah. This can be, so we will grasp this vessel here. So at the EG junction, we have sometimes, as we all know, larger vessels. And therefore, it's very important to target. You know, it's in the center of the cap. Open. Close. So this vessel has been occluded. You can see this area from the distal end of the cap down to the EG junction resected in two pieces. Yeah? Uh, we will do another resection here at the proximal end and then we have resected the whole specimen. And uh, because we have very little coagulation, uh, we get nice specimen with very little artifact. And you see, there is no bridge in between these resected areas here. Okay, I know you are under pressure, so we will continue one more resection. You see how large the resection area is. Mm -hmm. So this would have taken a little bit more time uh, with, with ESD, as you can imagine. Okay. Histology showed a low-risk adenocarcinoma resected R0 basally. Follow-up showed remaining normal Barrett's esophagus beside a scar, which was treated with cryoablation. Here you see the instruments and devices used. And finally, this is Horst Neuhaus recommended reading.